Hi, this is Tim. Welcome to our PLC Programming Methods to Sequence Machine series. In this series, we're going to be simulating a machine with some basic buttons and lights. It's going to start with the green light on, and when we press the green button, the yellow light's going to come on. We press the yellow button, the red light's going to come on. Just to add a little bit of variability, pressing the red button won't make it go to the next step, but we need to press and hold it for one second, and then the blue light will come on. And finally, pressing the blue button will start the process all over. While this is a really simple thing we're doing here, this can easily be scaled to any machine. And the best part about the methods we're showing here is they are compatible with all Allen Bradley PLCs. From the Control Logics and Compact Logics for Studio 5000, formerly RS Logics 500, to RS Logics 500 for the MicroLogics and the Slick 500, and even the Connected Components Workbench for the Micro 800 PLC. Actually, these are probably compatible with most brands of PLCs because they use basic programming fundamentals. Now, I'm not a fan of all these methods, but you will run into them out of the field. And I debated what order to put these in, and I decided to put them from the one I'm most likely to do to the one I am the least likely to do. And that doesn't mean the ones on the tail end are necessarily the worst. They're just the ones, in my opinion, that I wouldn't use to program. In our previous two lessons, we talked about the seal in method and the latch-unlatch method to sequence machine. In this lesson, we're gonna modify our program to show you how to use the BSL bit shift left instruction to track machine steps. This is another one I'm not a big fan of, but we will run into, so we need to understand how it works. If you didn't catch the previous lessons, I'll put a link to the whole series down in the description. Also note that this was originally a live stream, so it is not perfect. So, but that is the two bit ways that you see, which is gonna bring us to really, there's a couple more here. And first uh, we have this bit shift left and I was debating on skipping this one also, but it is one that, ever, that several of you requested. So, even now looking at it, I really don't like it. But okay, we can modify what we have for this bit shift left. This won't take too much. Is, yeah. Yeah, let's stick with the program we're doing. And yeah, we can, um, we can make this work pretty easy. So the bit shift left, what it's gonna do is if we're looking at our tag and we look at the values in it and we actually open it up, Let's just open any one of them up, that one up. Then it has ones and zeros in it. The bit shift left is actually gonna shift whatever is in zero to one, one to two, two to three, all the way through. And what's kind of cool about it is it can even span different or multiple numbers. So you can do this through arrays, I think up to around 2000. Now again, I don't, I don't particularly like this one either, but Let's go ahead and run through it really fast. Let's go, all right, one, let's just take this back out. And then in the end, we're going to, actually we're gonna look. I'm gonna take that one out. Oops, I, there, there. Just get some of the sealing stuff out. Uh, and actually, all right, it may have taken more than I thought to um, modify this one. But all right, seal in zero. This will be seal in one. This will be seal in two. This will be seal in three. Okay, and instead of a lot, I mean, instead of a latch, yeah, we're going to bring down an instruction block. And honestly, <laughs> Here's where I've never actually used a bit shift left in connected components, so we may be getting ready to learn something. But one cool thing about it is one, you can mouse over and see exactly what you need data type wise. And also we can highlight and hit F1 and it'll take you exactly to the instructions with all the things you need to know. But all right, so in this case, our source is what do we want to shift? And actually, we have this sequence seal in, and it's kind of already nicely tied into it. But and it, well, and even then, we could change the name of it. Even let's um, let's go to controller variables. Let's go down and find sequence seal in. But all right, I'm going to make this sequence bit shift left. 
But all right, now we're going to put sequence BSL. Now this, actually, this isn't going to exactly work though, because if we mouse over, notice that the SRC or source says any elementary, which means any bit that has, I guess, binary elements. But notice that one dot dot one by it. That means it's an array. And arrays can be a little confusing on how actually to specify in, but up here we have the dimension tab. And so if we want it just a single dimension, we can put one dot dot one. And that's gonna make a one dimensional array. It's exactly the same size. Also, I think you can do this, let's see. Can I do two dot dot two? Yeah, so you could actually have the array start at two. I don't know why you would wanna do that. CCW doesn't use a lot of the zeros. Usually the things do start at one, so we'll put it like that. And so now though, these are gonna have to have bracket one bracket. Oops, I did something wrong. There we go. It's gonna have to be in this format for it to work with the bit shift left. So we're going to just add this. And we'll do that to all of these. All right, this may have been easier to rewrite, but that's all right. We're gonna get through it. And again, this is not, actually all of these bit manipulation ways that we've done in this, the latch, the seal in, and this one, they would not be my preference on how to do this. But let's do enough of it that we can understand how to do it. So mainly, if we're in position zero, yep, okay. Now, so this now becomes also the one. All right, now the offset is gonna be zero because we're gonna start at bit zero. And the bit address is what we're actually gonna load into it. And we're gonna make that zero because we're gonna shift, whoops, bit address. Well, let's just jump back over here. What is that? Maybe I don't know. Location of bit shifted into source. Location of, well, maybe you have to create a bit for that. No, we can put false. There we go, yeah. All right, and you have to remember that. So zero, that is a number, it is an integer. False in Connected Components Workbench is a zero binary number. And then our length, we're just gonna make it the full double integer length of 32. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna shift all the bits each time that this happens. And what's the easier way? Just to copy and paste this? Yes, yeah, so really we're gonna delete what we have. Oh no, we got that already though. Well, let's just copy and paste one time and then we'll figure it out. Control C, V. And so this one will be, so we have step zero, we have step one. And this will be the yellow button. And okay, in this case, everything is there. We just need to copy this, put it right there and delete that. And then finally, we are gonna do this last one different. Let me make sure how I did this in Studio 5000 is, yeah, during that condition or if it equals zero, then we're gonna move a one into it. And we'll talk about why in a second, but all right. So we go back here. So yeah, in this case, like, so this part is here, but we're gonna be bracket one bracket, and we're gonna move a one into it. But we're also gonna do it whenever What, uh, Mustang, where are you at? Uh, what looks like function block and ladder? Oh, while we're, while, we're, while we're waiting on Mustang on that, go ahead and put that in the chat. This will be equals. All right, so then this will be this value. If it equals zero. Now first, let's see if this even works. Oh no, we gotta make some more changes. We gotta go over here. Okay, oops, why is it not like that? 
I should like that. Oh, oops, that's a one, not a zero. Hopefully I didn't do that any other times. But okay, that. Oh, but that needs to be that down. Delete. One. Two and three. That should make us a bit shift left sequencer. Let's see how that works. We have 15 participants. Okay. So now we're going to switch that back and let's do it. Well, first, let's just see if it works. Because honestly, uh, this is one I have not tested at all. Because I don't think I've ever used a bit shift left in Connected Components Workbench. But all right, so we press the green button, yellow light comes on. We press the yellow button, the red li light comes on. We press the red light or red button. Nothing happens, but we hold it for one second. Blue light comes on. We press the blue button, and it goes back. So it does work exactly the same. And now, though, this one's going to have the same issue for me that some of the others have, is if we go and look. Now, first, this is clean. I can kind of figure some of this out. But mainly, if I am not familiar with the bit shift left instruction, and that is a, I won't call it a specialty instruction to Studio 5000 or Ars Logix or Alan Bradley or any of that, but it is an instruction that's not necessarily in all of them. So if you're not familiar with it all, it can be a quick stumbling block. And so that's why I would not use this one. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. Next, we're going to show you a few links, including the PLC programming methods to sequence machine series. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.